This video is about the emotion of happiness or being happy. Now, the first thing I want to say about happiness is that quite often people refer to two different types of happiness without really realizing it. The first type of happiness is quite easy to understand. It's the emotion of joy. It's the feeling you get when something great happens to you that you're really pleased about, especially if it's unexpected. But the second type of happiness is the happiness that people refer to in terms of how generally happy they feel in their lives. In this video, I'm going to look at both types of happiness. Let's start with the joy version of happiness, or the buzz of delight that doesn't last for very long, but is quite powerful when it arrives. There are lots of words and expressions that are used to describe this kind of happiness. Some of them make us sound mildly happy, while others make us sound really, really happy or full of joy. Can you decide how much joy a person would be feeling if they were feeling over the moon, pleased, gleeful, delighted, exhilarated, elated, jubilant, contented, on top of the world, on cloud nine, as pleased as punch, having a whale of a time, overjoyed, ecstatic or euphoric. You'll need to stop the video if you want to consider each of these. So what kind of things can trigger joy? Or well, anything really that gives us a big dollop of pleasure will trigger joy. But because we all like different things, the joy kind of happiness will be triggered by different things in different people. But the kind of things that might cause us to feel joy can include receiving a gift that we really love, getting good at something we were trying to get good at, or achieving something we'd been trying to achieve, hearing that we did well in a test, learning that we really helped someone, a celebration, whether it's for us or for everyone, exercise like dancing or playing sport, laughing together with friends, planning something fun, winning a prize, doing something unusual or exciting for the first time, like going on a big wheel at a fair, a surprise visit from someone we love to spend time with, something we had been worried about turning out to be great in the end, someone giving us well-earned praise, or a really happy ending to a film. Did this list make you feel good as I read it? If it did, it shows how much influence thoughts can have on emotions. I'll also add that many things that make us feel joy involve other people that we care about. That's because it's an emotion that we evolved to help us connect with others. And when we feel joy, what's that like? Let's take a look. When we're experiencing the joy kind of happiness, we usually smile, tend to feel confident, can feel energetic, might feel like moving around a lot, we might speak loudly and enthusiastically, we're likely to enjoy other people's company, we tend to be kind to other people and want other people to be happy too, we tend to notice our surroundings more, we can be more creative or happy to explore new things, we might laugh, we tend to think positively, and we can feel like everything is just great. But like I've already said, this is the joy kind of happiness. And like many emotions, joy comes and then it goes. And this is normal. We can't expect to feel joy all of the time. That would be really unrealistic. It would be easy to believe that we're meant to be happy all of the time because we see lots of joyous people on TV adverts, magazine adverts, adverts on bus stops, we see messages that tell us to be happy, social media often shows the most happy bits of everyone's lives, and sometimes we hear people boasting about how great their lives are, but these messages are misleading. As a human, we must expect to feel both enjoyable and unenjoyable emotions, emotions that make us want to get on with things, and emotions that do the opposite, emotions we feel often and emotions that we rarely feel, really noticeable and not so noticeable emotions, emotions that are triggered by things that have just happened to us or emotions triggered by the thoughts we're having, emotions that last a few seconds and emotions that last a lot longer. Humans are emotional things and we really cannot be in control of all of our emotional responses. And we certainly should not expect to feel joy all of the time. 
we are far more complicated than that. So what about the other kind of happiness? The happiness that's a more general one about how pleased or satisfied we are with our lives. Some people might call that kind of happiness well-being. And if we have that happiness, we are also a bit more likely to feel joy more frequently too. I think this kind of happiness depends on a lot of different things. So let's take a look at some of those things. I cover a lot in the next section of this video, so you might want to stop it now and then to give yourself some thinking time. There is a clear link between happiness and our physical health. In other words, happiness depends somewhat on us getting enough sleep, drinking plenty of water and eating a balanced diet that includes fruit and vegetables, getting some exercise and taking some time to relax. When we're physically unhealthy, it's hard to feel great. Also, happiness depends upon the relationships in our lives. Because humans need and love to spend time with other people that matter to them, friends and people in our family who we love are really important to our happiness. We can struggle a bit in some relationships, but a key thing to remember is to try and forgive others when they mess up, because we all mess up at some point. If someone upsets you, try not to keep thinking about what happened and try to remember the good things about the relationship. Spend some time thinking about all the people you like and love. You can make a list or draw a picture of them all to regularly remind yourself how much you are liked and loved. Our happiness also depends upon how well we learn to manage our emotions, especially unenjoyable ones. Emotions can be tricky things, but they become less tricky when we learn to recognise them, know what triggered them, and know what's best to do when we feel them. Recognising our emotions can also help us become self-aware. In other words, they can help us learn about ourselves, how we behave, what upsets us, what we value or think is important, what we struggle with and what we enjoy. Also linked to emotions and happiness is the idea that if we feel some negative emotions for a long time we are unlikely to be happy and therefore probably need to find an adult who will help us. For example we might need help if we feel stressed or really worried every time we think about something or we have to do a particular thing. We might need help if we feel sad for a long time and nothing seems to make us feel happy. How we think about ourselves also affects our happiness. It's important that we are kind to ourselves to help us to be happy. Times when we might be unkind to ourselves can include when we make mistakes and don't forgive ourselves, when we're no good at something and we tell ourselves off or tell ourselves that we're useless for not being good at whatever it was, when a friend makes an unkind comment about us that we then decide is true, or when someone says something nice about us and we don't believe it. It's easier said than done, but it really helps us to be happy if we expect to make mistakes and really don't think they're a big deal. If we accept that we can't be brilliant at everything, but at the same time, we do accept and enjoy that we are good at some things. Also, if we hear a voice inside our head telling us that we are rubbish, we need to replace it with kinder comments. How we think about what happens in our world also affects our happiness. People who are optimistic tend to be happier than those who aren't. Optimistic means tending to see the positive or good things in a situation as much as possible and generally having a positive outlook. We can train our brains to be more optimistic Here's a list of things you could try to train your brain to be more optimistic. Think about something that went well at the end of each day. Regularly list things that you're grateful for. Put photos of positive memories where you'll see them often. Never assume that any mistake that you make will mean that you will always make mistakes or always make the same mistake. Or when something goes wrong, don't use it as proof that everything will go wrong, which is called catastrophizing. You could say something kind or encouraging to yourself at the start of each day, like, go do the best you can today, or you get on and be you. Try not to moan, instead try to sort negative situations out by finding solutions. Give other people compliments. 
Let go of things that have happened in the past that did not go well and move on. Believe that you can have a good effect on your own life and on other people. And lastly, try smiling more at other people and to yourself. It does work. Another thing that really contributes to our happiness is about finding things we love to do. Whether it's drawing, playing sport, cooking, music, sewing, making things, reading or being kind to other people, finding things you love to do can help make you happy. Making plans and setting challenges for ourselves can make us enthusiastic about life. Setting goals that we want to achieve can make us motivated and give us something to put some energy into. Also, it can push us to achieve things and achieving things always feels good. Many people believe that being kind to others increases our chances of being happy. This seems true to me. Think about the last time you helped someone, gave someone a gift or gave someone a compliment. How did it make you feel? Chances are it made you feel happy. What's more, the kinder you are to other people, as a general rule, the more chance you have of people being kind back to you. Being kind to other people can be so easy. It can be just giving a compliment. But if you want to make being kind a real project, you could try some of the following things. Write someone a list of all the things you love about them. Tidy or clean something for someone without being asked. Make a bookmark for someone with their name decorated on it. Make a treasure trail for someone that ends up with a treat like a chocolate bar. Make someone a book that asks them to answer lots of questions about themselves and show an interest in the book once they've filled it in. Make a thank you for being my friend card and hide it in someone's bag. Decorate a peg with a kind message and peg it on someone. Offer to give someone a massage or play with their hair. Paint a picture for someone showing a memory of something fun that you did together. Something else I want to say is that this is my video about happiness with my ideas in it. But happiness has been discussed by lots of different people for centuries and they all had something different to say about it. So what I sometimes quite like to do is to read quotations about happiness and see what it teaches me or what it makes me think about. Have a look at this handful of quotations and see if you can work out what each person is telling you about happiness. It is not how much we have, but how much we enjoy that makes happiness. Be happy for this moment. This moment is your life. If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. Happiness is a direction, not a place. The art of being happy lies in the power of extracting happiness from common things. Happiness depends upon ourselves. And the last quotation is one of my favourites, partly because my nan always used to say it. Happiness is someone to love, something to do and something to look forward to. That seems true to me. So what have we learnt? Well we've learnt about two different types of happiness. We've learnt that one type is called the emotion of joy and we should not expect to feel that all the time. And we've learned that another type is how genuinely content we are with our lives. And we've learned that there are things we can do to increase the second kind of happiness.